Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 7. Alien Pharaohs The history of ancient Egypt is filled to the brim with mystery, but nothing is more mysterious than the pharaohs who ruled the Egyptian kingdom thousands of years ago. A new study is suggesting that certain Egyptian pharaohs may not have come from this planet. They may have been genetically engineered experiments created by beings not from Earth. According to American ecologist Dr. Ellis Silver, humans may not be natives of Earth. He believes that there are too many examples of human physiology that seem to suggest that the entire human race might not have evolved along with other life forms on the planet. And Ellis Silver isn't the only one who believes this. There are thousands of people out there who have noticed how strange human beings are compared to all the other creatures on Earth, even if we do share an astounding amount of DNA with chimpanzees. Silver said in an interview that Earth does meet our needs as a species, but not as much as it should. Silver said that chronic diseases like back pain and other physical stressors suggest we evolved in a world with less gravity than this one. He argues that whereas other creatures live their whole lives relatively healthily, humans begin to break down after a couple decades. We suffer from cancers and crippling injuries that aren't our fault. It's something that you don't see in other places in the animal kingdom. Another thing Dr. Silver mentions is the fact that babies have heads so big they are often difficult to give birth to. In ancient times, having a baby often proved fatal for the mother. And this is yet another example of how humans just don't seem to be quite right here on this planet. But what does all this have to do with ancient Egyptian pharaohs? Many believe the pharaohs may have been some of the original human experiments created by extraterrestrials. The theory is that aliens, after creating humans, began to mix their own DNA with them. In the year 1352 BC, King Akhenaten ascended to the throne. He was the 10th pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, and to be frank, he looked like an alien. Scientists have used medical afflictions to try and explain the pharaoh's weird appearance. They say that he may have suffered from Marfan syndrome or Kleinfelter syndrome. But the unconventional thinkers believe Akhenaten may have looked weird because he had alien blood coursing through his veins. It would explain why his son, King Tutankhamun, also looked bizarre, and why archaeologists found artifacts crafted from space rocks in King Tut's tomb. And now for number 6. But first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a huge thank you to Young Fuego Houston and Nolia Rico for supporting this channel. Thanks, guys! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos about amazing discoveries, or dinosaurs, or mysteries of the ancient world. We got it all! Number 6. The Secret Space Observatory Nobody can agree on what the purpose of Gobekli Tepe was 12,000 years ago. Researchers Martin B. Swetman and Dimitrios Tsikritsis proposed in 2017 that the ancient site was used to monitor comets and meteor showers. But their research clashed with the opinions of mainstream scientists. Most experts have interpreted the mysterious archaeological site as a social building, not an observatory. Former head of excavation Klaus Schmidt says Gobekli Tepe was a sacred site built as a communal space by Stone Age pilgrims. He called it an amphictyony for hunter-gatherers. Its pillars were decorated with images of ancestors, gods, and supernatural beings. It was a sanctuary where weary travelers and hunters could gather to give praise to whatever deities they worshipped. But another theory is that the strange images carved on the pillars of this ancient temple in Turkey show beings from another world. Specialist Ted Banning, who is one of the top scientists when it comes to sacred buildings of the Neolithic Levant, says this site was a settlement. He suggested Gobekli Tepe was one of the first permanent human settlements in the world. Both Schmidt and Banning have admitted the humanoid pillars at Gobekli Tepe look eerily similar to the statues on Easter Island called Moai. However, neither of them have been willing to suggest a connection between the two cultures. One of the most important pieces of stone discovered at Gobekli Tepe is the Vulture Stone. It's a huge slab of carved rock that has symbols and drawings on it that seem to correlate to the zodiac. The Vulture Stone shows early characters that look extremely similar to Gemini, Pisces, Sagittarius, and Scorpio. The unmistakable similarities make it hard to argue that the Stone Age people who made the stone didn't have a fundamental understanding of the cosmos. 
The cold hard truth is that Gobekli Tepe was built around 11,500 or 12,000 years ago by unknown Stone Age humans in Turkey. It's also believed to be the oldest megalith on the planet. But whether it's an observatory, settlement, or sacred space, nobody knows for sure. Number 5. The Tomb of the Prophetess On the southern wall of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, there are the remains of two extremely old gates. Archaeologists call them the double gate and the triple gate because one has two arches and the other has three. But in ancient times, the gates were known as the Huldah Gates. They were named after a mysterious prophetess who appeared in the Hebrew Bible. Her gates were used by Jewish pilgrims who entered the Temple Mount during the days before the Second Temple was destroyed. Huldah didn't play a particularly large role in the Hebrew Bible, as she was only mentioned in nine verses. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem 2,700 years ago and was an important advisor to King Josiah. Huldah was the one who prophesied a future of destruction as described to her by God. The Lord said that disaster and ruin would come to Jerusalem and its people, but she reassured King Josiah that because of his piety, God would allow him to fall peacefully into his grave before seeing the annihilation of Jerusalem. Based on the text in the Hebrew Bible, scholars believe that Huldah was likely a real prophetess. The people of Jerusalem likely trusted her as being a direct emissary to God. They would have believed the woman spoke to God, then passed on God's message to the high priests and royal officials. She had unprecedented power, giving information to kings that changed entire nations. But there isn't much more that anybody knows about Huldah other than her alleged burial place. There are two main theories as to where the great prophetess of Israel was buried. During the Middle Ages, people believed Huldah's skeleton was buried underneath a mosque on the Mount of Olives. But the more popular theory is that she was buried between the walls of Jerusalem, right outside the ancient Huldah Gates. There is currently a replica tomb that was built in modern times outside the Temple Mount. And legend is that the replica was built directly over Huldah's true burial place. But unfortunately, nobody has ever found the prophetess's real grave. Number 4. The Ural Pictograms The Ural Mountains run across western Russia from the edge of the Arctic Ocean all the way to the bottom of the Ural River. The mountains mark the boundary between Asia and Europe. And these days, given the current Russo-Ukrainian conflict, the mountains are valuable to Russia as a source of coal and precious metal. Over the centuries, the Ural Mountains have been home to countless civilizations. 5,000 years ago, an unknown group of humans made some extremely strange pictograms deep within the mountains. They left behind images carved into the rocks that suggest they had knowledge of incredibly advanced technology. The mysterious pictograms were found in the 1600s during the rule of Peter the Great. This was during Russia's transition from what was essentially the Middle Ages into the modern age. According to legend, Peter the Great was the one who ordered his scientists to study the pictograms in the mountains. But that's only a legend. Nobody knows how many of the pictograms were found 300 years ago. But today's scientists have mapped about 497 miles of them spread throughout the mountains. Many of the pictograms were created using a special concoction of ochre and blood. And that's why most of them are dark brown or dark reddish in color. Most of the images are fairly normal, exactly what you'd expect to see from pictograms. There are painted pictures of birds, snakes, bears, geese, and moose, all the wild animals of the mountains. But there are also detailed anatomical diagrams of skeletons and organs. Researchers think this may have been a way for hunters to pass on their knowledge of dissecting animals to generations after them. In other words, the pictograms represent some of the earliest anatomical textbooks. There are also pictures of humans and hunting tools. Images depicting fishing nets, spears, and humans dancing can be found sprawled along the Ural Mountains. But now, let's get into the weird pictograms that have been discovered. There are strange geometric figures and illustrations of shapes that look eerily similar to chemical structures. Vladimir Avinsky, a molecular and atomic physicist from Russia, has studied the Ural pictograms extensively. He's noted how the pictograms of geometric shapes look a lot like the chains and polygons and chemical compounds. 
There is absolutely no explanation as to how mountain people could have understood the honeycomb structures of chemical compounds 5,000 years ago. But scientists like Avinsky think they may have been given the information by extraterrestrials visiting the planet. To give you some examples, the pictograms seem to be showing the chemical compositions of polyethylene, anthracene, atactic polystyrene, and graphite. What do you think these pictograms represent? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 3. The Macles Tribe According to ancient Greek historian Herodotus, there was a tribe of androgynes living in Libya 2,500 years ago. Herodotus said they were called the Macles, and that each member of the tribe was a hermaphrodite. Half their body was male, and the other half was female. Herodotus claimed they lived on the shores of Lake Tritonis. They wore their hair extremely long in the back and were known for their warlike fury. Aristotle confirmed the existence of the Maclees tribe in the 4th century BC, and so too did Pliny the Elder in the 1st century AD. Herodotus said there were two tribes living in the area. The other was called the Osses, and they were separated from the Maclees by the Triton River. Every year, the two tribes got together and held a festival for the goddess Tanit, in which they pitted their virgins against each other. This was a primitive version of the gladiatorial games. Two teams of virgins would fight with stones in the name of the goddess, and those who perished in the fighting were deemed non-virgins and liars. Historians don't know how much of this is true. Modern scholars have suggested Herodotus was confused by the long hair of the Maclees men and the fighting style of the women, which led him to describe them all as hermaphrodites. The tribe likely did exist, though. Scholars are fairly certain there were two warring tribes in Libya who were part of the mysterious cult of Tanit. The goddess was the symbol of fertility across Libya, in Carthage, and in Phoenicia. But why the Maclees sent their virgins into gladiator combat is unknown. Number 2. The Gardens of Babylon The seven wonders of the ancient world weren't picked by a couple of modern nerds who chose their favorite ancient structures. They were picked by a Greek engineer named Philo in the year 225 BC. Philo produced a list of the seven greatest things to be seen in the world, but it was more of a travel guide than anything. The seven wonders on the list were the Pyramids of Giza, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, and the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Unfortunately, most of these wonders are destroyed today. The only wonder of the ancient world that remains intact is the Pyramids of Giza. Five of the wonders have disappeared or are in complete ruins, but they've at least been confirmed as real things thanks to archaeological evidence. The only ancient wonder that's never been proven to be a real place is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The Hanging Gardens is the great mystery of Philo's list. The legend is that the Hanging Gardens were constructed by King Nebuchadnezzar in the city of Babylon sometime in the 6th century BC. But there are no references in any Babylonian sources that a grand garden was constructed in the city. And for centuries, archaeologists have searched for physical evidence throughout Mesopotamia. They've looked in Babylon, they've searched through other Babylonian cities, but they have found nothing. So what do you think? Did the Hanging Gardens of Babylon ever exist? Was there really a garden so splendid that it earned a place alongside the Pyramids of Giza? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 1. The Mystery Schools The ancient world was filled with mystery schools. They could be found in Rome, Egypt, Greece, and Mesopotamia. They were institutions of learning shrouded in total secrecy. And it was at these schools where people learned spiritual wisdom and forbidden esoteric knowledge. Although the teachings were secret, scholars think that mystery schools of the ancient world had a big effect on the development of philosophy and religion. The issue with these schools is that they weren't allowed to write anything down. Because they were so secretive, they left very little information about themselves behind. Researchers think the oldest mystery schools can be dated to early Egypt and Greece, but they also existed in Persia, Babylon, and India as well. In Egypt, the schools were often known as the House of Life. It's believed the Temple of Karnak in Thebes was a meeting place for devotees of the school. The school likely concentrated on teachings of reality and the afterlife while trying to unravel the mysteries of the universe. But it wasn't necessarily easy to join one of these schools. Initiates often had to undergo a series of trials and rituals, though nobody knows what they were. In Greece, the mystery schools were known as the Eleusinian Mysteries. 
and the most popular group focused on the teachings of the goddess Demeter. They were all about unraveling the mysteries behind death and rebirth. In Persia, the Magi were the leaders of the mystery school. They were likely associated with the high priests of Zoroastrianism, but they too are shrouded in secrecy. The Babylonians had their own mystery school called the Chaldean Oracles. And unlike so many other mystery schools that focus on death and rebirth, the Babylonians focused on astrology and the potential of seeing the future. In India, the Guru Shishya tradition was their version of a mystery school. They were heavily associated with the three most popular religions in Asia, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. Although scholars don't know what happened behind the closed doors of these mystery schools, they do have a fairly good idea. All of the schools taught similar things about interconnectedness and self-awareness. There was likely meditation and visualization classes or sessions, and they discussed hidden universal knowledge and spiritual truth. But sadly, the mystery schools of the ancient world came to a grinding halt with the rise of Christianity in the first century AD. If you could go back in time, which mystery school would you join? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more. See you later. Bye.